I come, I come, I come to the garden, to the garden, to the garden alone, all alone, while the dew, the dew is still, is still on the roses.
I'm calling on you, Jesus. Oh, I need your precious cleansing blood. Oh, Lord Jesus. Yes, I need you.
song I sing, more than the song more than the next heartbeat, more than the next heartbeat, more than anything, and Lord, as time goes by, as time goes by, I'll be by your side. Everyone in the on uh, the forum, please come inside. I'd like to welcome everyone to the La Puente Church of Christ morning worship. Those of you here in the building and those who may be just tuning in, if you're new to this worship, we'd like to welcome everyone and consider yourself our honored guest. Our first song, He's My King. Let's all sing together. All day long of Jesus I am singing. He's my song of joy will ever be. All the while he keeps my heart bells ringing. For his love is everything to me. He's my King. And know oh, I dearly love him. He is my king, no other is above him. All day long, in rapture praise, I sing, I sing. He is my savior, he's my king. Streams of love around my soul are flowing. From his heart, love's everlasting free. That is why my faith in him I'm showing. That is why an endless song I sing. He is my king, and oh, I dearly love him. He is my king, no other is above him all day long in rapture. 
to praise I sing. I sing. He's my Savior, He's my King. In His light, I'm going home to glory with the souls who trust His saving grace. Going home to sing and tell His story in the sunshine of his faith and he is my king and oh I dearly love him he is my king no other is above him all day long in rapture praise I sing I sing he is my savior he's my king Amen. Before we go into prayer, this is a good opportunity to take your phones, put them on vibrate, or turn them off altogether so we won't have any interruptions. Let us together pray. Our kind and loving Father, again, we are truly blessed to be able to assemble in your presence to give you the praise and the honor that you deserve. We thank you, Father, for all the many blessings you bestowed on each and every family here. Father, many have been sick but you have blessed him. We just pray for those, Father, who may be going through trials and tribulations and going through things that they can't understand, but you are the great physician. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for allowing us to sing praises, to lay our burdens at your feet, to let you handle the things that we cannot handle. And we thank you for the manservant who was about to come before us to deliver a word from your word. And we pray that the word will be encouraging to us that we may be able to go out and share with others what you have blessed us to have. Continue to be with us all through the service. We pray that everything we do and say is acceptable and pleasing to your sight. In the name of Jesus, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. All right, all right, church, we're going to need some help on this. Let it rise. You know what, man? <laughs> I didn't realize how small that printer is. But we're going to work it. We're going to work it. We're going to work it. Let the spirit of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the spirit of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the glory of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Whoa. songs of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the glory of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let it rise. Let the praises of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the praises of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the glory of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. Let it rise. Let the spirit of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the spirit of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the glory of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Whoa. Whoa. Thank you, church. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, God is good. God is good. Oh.
appreciate that. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He keep cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. He keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Amen. That should be everybody's testimony. Amen. That God gets sweeter and sweeter every day. After this next election, we will have scripture reading and prayer. Scripture reading and prayer. I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that my Redeemer lives and ever prays for me. I know eternal life he gives from sin and sorrow free. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life he I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. He will that I should wholly be in word and thought in Then I his holy face may see from I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know eternal life he gives. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that over yonder there's a place prepared. For me, a home, a house not made with hand, most wonderful to see. I know, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know, I know I know. Live. 
Today's uh, scripture will be from Luke 23, verses 32 through 43. That would be Luke 23, 32 through 43. Crucified between two thieves. All found? This is from the Holman Christian Bible. Two others, criminals, were also led to be executed with him. When they arrived at the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with these criminals, one on the right and one on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, because they do not know what they do. And he divided his clothes and cast lots. The people stood watching, and even the leaders kept scoffing. He saved others. Let him save himself. If this is God's Messiah, the chosen one, the soldiers also mocked him. They came offering him sour wine and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. An inscription above him written, this is Jesus, king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals hanging there began to yell insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the others answered, the other answered, rebuking him, don't you even fear God? Since you are undergoing the same punishment, we are punished justly because we're guilty and getting back what we deserve for the things we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Jesus did, I assure you, Today will be with me in paradise. I've just read for your hearing Luke 23, 32 through 43. May the church add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Please stand for prayer. Our kind and righteous Father, we come to you this morning in the name of Jesus, just thanking you for all your blessings, thanking you for this privilege, this opportunity that we have to assemble ourselves as you have directed us together and to worship you in spirit and truth this day. Father, we come to you uh, this morning realizing that there are those that uh, would want to be here this morning but just cannot be here, and so we just ask that uh, wherever they are, uh, that you will bless them uh, wherever they are, those that are that are sick and afflicted in some way, those that have had surgeries uh, recently and just, just dealing with chronic illness, we just ask, if it be thy will, that you would bless them in a special way this day. Father, we also pray for those that are just uh, bereaved, and uh, we know that even after the funerals and memorials are over, that's when the loss can set in, and so uh, we just ask that you be with them. Bless us that uh, we might pull together and support each other during these tough times. We ask a special blessing on the Simpson family as uh, they're still going through it uh, and, and, and so uh, we just ask that uh, you be with all of those that are suffering at this time. Also pray for those that are traveling, those that are away from us at this time that uh, you can be with them and bless them in such a way that they can uh, have a good time or attend to business wherever they are and then once again return to us if it be thy will. Father we pray for our world and, and all the war and strife on every continent, even in, in our local communities. We just pray that uh, there will be peace and that we'll do our part to uh, spread uh, the light uh, wherever we go and that uh, those that uh, put themselves in harm's way to uh, protect us each and every day, especially those of the household of faith, that you'll bless them uh, as well, Heavenly Father. We're also just asking a special blessing for this congregation that meets here at La Pointe and the things that we're trying to do. And that uh, our line of sight will always be on you. We'll keep our hand in your hand and try to do those things uh, that you have us do. We also uh, just pray for the one that's going to stand before us shortly and break unto us the bread of life. Those things that he has studied, that he might uh, step before us with power and, and clarity and, and, and simplicity and just uh, depart, uh, impart those things that, that he has studied, that he may lay those things upon our heart and that we can do our parts and not just be hearers of the word but doers as well. Just continue to bless us as we worship you this day. We pray that all the things that we do and say will be pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. 
This is our prayer. We ask it in the Son, Jesus' name. Amen. We always have a lot of sadness, death, with their death is always sadness, but we want to remember our final destination. Won't it be wonderful there? When with the Savior we enter the glory land, won't it be wonderful there? In the troubles and cares of the story land, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear over there. Joyously singing with heart bells all ringing, Lord, won't it be wonderful there? From walking and talking with Christ the supernal one, won't it be wonderful there? Praising, adoring the matchless eternal one, won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there, having no burdens to the over there, joyously singing with our bells all ringing, Lord, won't it be wonderful there, there where the tempest will never be sweeping us, won't it be wonderful there. Sure that forever the Lord will be keeping us. Won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there? Having no burdens to bear over there. Joyously singing with heart bells all ringing, Lord. Won't it be wonderful there? Won't it be wonderful there, having no burdens to bear over there, joyously singing with heart bells all ringing, Lord, won't it be wonderful there? Amen. Keep that song on your hearts. Won't it be wonderful there? I know it's sad to lose our loved ones. But it's going to be all right. Amen. After this next selection, we'll have our own brother, David Lewis Sr., come before us and in, his own, in his own way. And after that, at that time, we'll have our uh, invitation song. We'll be somebody, we'll be not, somebody knocking at your door. And at that time, if you have, the, you have the need for prayer or you need to pray for someone, we'll do it at that time. The ushers will have cards prayer cards that will be handed out, and you can request one at that time. Those of you who are viewing, you can uh, sum submit your request online on Facebook as well. I can read. Ch oh, children's Bible Hour. At this time, the children will go ahead and leave for Children's Bible Hour. Okay, hold to God's unchanging hand. Oh, to God's unchanging hand, we should always remember that. Time is filled with swift transition. Not of earth on who can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal as you hold to God's unchanging hand. Why don't you hold to his hand too? God's unchanging hand. Oh, brother, won't you hold to hands to my God's unchanging hand? You got to build your hopes on things eternal as you hold to God's unchanging hand. Trust in him who will not leave you. Whatsoever years may bring, still for earthly friends forsaken, still 
more closely to him cling. Why don't you hold to his hands to my God's unchanging hand? Oh, brother, hold to his hands to my God's unchanging hand. You've got to build your hopes on things eternal as you hold to God's unchanging hand. When your journey is completed, if to God you have been true, fair and bright the home and glory, your enraptured soul will be. say amen. amen. Well, that song is certainly a true song. Yes. There are a lot of people whose hands you can hold on to these days. Your friend's hand, your wife's hand, your neighbor's hand, but there's one hand that won't let you go, and that's the hand of God Almighty. I want to say good morning to everyone who is gathered here in the building today, and as I look out, I see a nice audience that's already gathered here, a nice size group. And I know that there are people who are following us on Facebook and YouTube, uh, online also. We welcome you uh, to join us. We encourage you to come back to the building as soon as you can because there's nothing like the fellowship of people I in person in a building. It's good, it's good to see those who we haven't seen in, in a while. And every week, more and more people are starting to come back again to the building. And I'm convinced you're here because you love the Lord and you have the right, right spirit wanting to worship and wanting to gather together. And I'm reminded of the words of David. He said it was I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And so this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, again, thanking all of you uh, for being here. I've got a lesson today that is uh, a little twist on a familiar theme, if you will. And so it's a little bit different, and my approach is going to be a little bit different today. And I'm hoping that it will be something that will be you beneficial and useful to all of us, and I include myself in that category, all of us as we journey on this Christian pathway, as we deal with people and try to see if we can convert men and women to the cause of Christ. Now, some of you might remember a television show that was on a number of years ago, and the show was called, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? That sound familiar? A show called, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? It first came on in 2007, and then they revived it again in 2015, and then again in 2019. Uh, the producer was the comedian Jeff Foxworthy. Ever heard of him? Funny, funny cat. And then uh, the Mark Burnett, who was uh, also a, a, a major uh, producer. And the idea of this show was you get a panel of fifth graders, 10-year-olds, and you, you put them on the stage, and you have contestants come who are adults and they have to match wits with these fifth graders. And so they ask a question that fifth graders will know, and then they ask the same question to the adults to see what they could do. And uh, you know, sometimes you know, the fifth graders out outclass the adults. I know if they would have asked me to be on that show, I, wouldn't have, I would not have uh, answered. <laughs> said, no, no, I'll pass on that. I can't be shown up by a fifth grader. But that was what the, 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 the essence of the show was. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? And so I want to borrow from that show's theme for my lesson today. Now, put that in your pocket uh, 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 and kind of let it sit there for a minute. I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. Now, we know 
that Jesus Christ was crucified on the cruel Roman cross. Am I right about that? There were a number of events which took place before and after, and even during his crucifixion, which were monumental. In fact, uh, at a time when most people would have done nothing but feel sorry for themselves, instead, Jesus Christ was doing extraordinary things, and he was still teaching. He was still teaching people. If we read the account of his crucifixion in all the Gospels, in all the Gospels, you, and you read them together, you see a different points being made by all the gospel writers. So when he was arrested, he did not fight back. We see that when he was falsely accused, he said nothing. When they nailed him to the cross, he bore the pain. And it was painful, church. And when he was on that cross, he directed his disciple John to take care of his mother who he loved. And we know that when he was dying, he asked God to forgive them, the people who were putting him to death, because they did not know what they were doing. And when his life was slipping away, he cried out to God the Father and showed his human emotion. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was in pain and crying out as a human at that moment. And the Bible tells me that the sun refused to shine for a number of hours in the middle of the day. And there was darkness everywhere all across the land. And the Bible said that the veil of the temple was writ in twain from the top to the bottom all the way down. Many extraordinary things occurred when Jesus died. And I want to look, though, at the brief encounter which took place between Jesus and the thieves who were crucified on either side of him. He had a brief encounter with those thieves. The conversation with those two thieves, which Jesus had, is the basis of my lesson today. So in the text that was read in our hearing, Luke 23, 32 through 43, we observe that Jesus was crucified. And he was crucified with two other men. Uh, King James called them male factors or thieves, one on the right side and one on the left side. And one of the thieves mocked Jesus, and he said to him, If you be the Christ, save yourself and us too. For purposes of distinction, I'm going to call this thief the mocking thief, the mocking thief. Now, Jesus did not even dignify that comment with, with an, a response. The other thief who I'm going to identify as the humble thief. The humble thief had a different point of view. He criticized the mocking thief, and he scolded him. I'm paraphrasing now. He said, man, don't you fear God? How can you speak to him like this? This man, referring to Jesus, has done nothing wrong. We're here because we are guilty. Then this humble thief showed his true humility and his true faith. He said, Lord. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, this day you will be with me in paradise. Jesus, who knew the heart of the thief, and he knew that he was being genuine and honest, gave him this proclamation. And we know from other texts in the Bible, in the New Testament, that the paradise which Jesus was referring to was the existence where the faithful go while they are waiting judgment. Lazarus the beggar was there with Abraham as recorded in Luke the 16th chapter, verses 19 through 31. And so this humble thief was saved by Jesus in that moment, in that moment. And so I've chosen for my discourse today the topic, are you smarter than a thief? Are you smarter than a thief? I'll make three points and I'll take my seat. Are you smarter than a thief? Point number one, no deathbed conversions. No deathbed conversions. There are a number of important lessons which we can learn from this incident with the thief on the cross. However, we must teach correctly on this passage, and that's a big problem, Brother Junior, in our world today. People do not teach correctly on this passage. There are people in the religious world today who believe and who share the view that this passage or this event tells us that we can be converted on our deathbed even moments before we die. They say, I'm not saying this, but they say if, if Jesus could save the thief on the cross before his death, then he will save us also. They ignore the fact that they are not living right. They ignore the fact that they're not obeying God's laws. 
They ignore the fact that they're not obeying the gospel or being baptized. They look at this passage as a guarantee, if you will, that God will be merciful and reward even the worst sinner if he will only ask for salvation at the end of his life. Even the Catholic Church, the largest organization in the religious world, has adopted some form of this principle. Now, church, don't get me wrong now. The Catholic Church has a lot of good people in it, a lot of well-meaning people in it, even sincere people. But sometimes sincere people can be sincerely wrong. And this is one of those occasions. And, and so uh, the Catholic Church, often when a person is, is, con is dying or condemned to death or on their deathbed, they will send for the priest, and the priest will come, and he will administer the last rites to that person. They believe that in some way or another, this will help that dying person get into heaven. And they often even ask the person to confess uh, for his sins and then accept Christ at this dying moment. <laughs> but church, I stop by to tell you that this is wrong. And this is a false belief in the religious world. It's false. Salvation is a key, crucial, and important concept which is central to Christianity. And there are many passages in the Bible which explain it and reveal it. But you don't get salvation after you have lived your whole life without God and without Christ. And you wasted away all of your, your productive years. And then we have nothing left to give. Then you want to give that over to the, to the Lord. It doesn't work that way. You see, salvation takes work. Salvation takes faith. Salvation takes commitment to the Lord and time. You got to put the time in. It is false to believe that you can be saved five minutes before you die. There is no scripture in the whole Bible. And but Hooper, that's 66 books. <laughs> you won't find one, not one book and not one scripture in the whole Bible that will state or imply that a person can be saved five minutes before they die. If you believe that, you're deluding yourself. If you know of anyone who's believing that, they are deluding themselves. We got to figure out some way to help people to understand what the Lord requires of us. What Jesus did with that humble thief, tell him that this day you'll be with me in paradise, what he did with that humble thief was an exception to the rule and not the rule. An exception to the rule. And Jesus Christ could make the exception because he was the son of God. The scriptures provide with numerous verses which give us information and insight into what it takes to, become, to obtain salvation. You see, Jesus Christ came to seek and save that which was lost. Luke 19 and 10. Peter told the Jews after preaching that first gospel sermon in Acts the second chapter, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then he said, save yourself from this untoward generation. The apostles baptized thousands on that occasion. Am I right about it? And Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. That's Mark 16, 15 and 16. And over in Acts, the fourth chapter, verse 12, in the King James Version, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. And that's the name of Jesus. And what Jesus has told us to do, that is what we must do in order to be saved. There are specific instructions as to how one must be saved. You must hear the gospel of Christ, Romans 10, 17. You must believe that gospel, Romans 10, 10. You must repent of your sins, Luke 13 and 3. You must publicly acknowledge or confess your faith in Jesus Christ and in him to be the son of God, Acts 8, verse 37. You must be baptized or immersed in water for the remission of your sins and brought up out of that water. Acts 2, verse 38, and 1 Peter 3, 20 to 21 says, In the days of Noah, eight souls were saved by water. The life figure were into baptism, doth also now save us. That's how you, you're baptized, and that's how you're saved. So I ask you again, are you smarter than a thief? Are you smarter than a thief? Point number two, what the thief knew. Now, see, the thief, he didn't, he didn't know a whole lot. I mean, he was thieving, first of all. <laughs> That's the first problem, right? But the thief knew something that is represented here at the end of his life. If we analyze the statements made by this thief, we can see what he knew. And we can maybe see what we should know. 
By the way, uh, I want to just read again for your hearing just a portion of that, that scripture. I had it read from the Holman Christian Standard Bible earlier, and I, w- I want to read the, that uh, from, the, from the King James translation. So turn with me into uh, Luke, the 23rd chapter. We're going to go to verse 39, verse 39. Luke 23, verse 39, uh, reading from the King James translation. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And that is how it occurred. That is how that brief encounter with that humble thief occurred. Thus not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation. He's telling his partner, you know, the, the mocking thief. And he said, we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing amiss. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Each statement was a lesson in and of itself. And I want to just just briefly describe how important each of those statements was. Thus not thou fear God. Okay? Some people live their whole life and operate as if God is nothing. They don't fear God. They don't worry about God. They don't need God, or they think they don't need God. They don't fear God's power. And you know what, church? It's foolish. It's foolish not to fear and not to revere God. Why? Because God is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. God is omnipresent. He's everywhere. And God is omniscient, which means he's all-knowing. You've got to fear a power like that. God spoke the world into existence in Genesis 1, verse 16. And Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13, the wise man said, Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So church members, we need to fear God. Revere him. Don't belittle him by thinking that we can do uh, nothing and, and still be ushered into the heavenly kingdom. And sometimes even church members delude themselves that way. Jesus never said that. Jesus never suggested that. And it's not true. It simply is it. Seeing that thou art in the same condemnation, the way he told his mocking friend. Why are you mocking Jesus? You are in no better condition than he is. You hang on the cross, he hanging on the cross. What makes you so arrogant? Who made you to be the judge? You're not doing any better. There are people in the world, you know, who love to mock or criticize others. They love to mock and criticize us. People like to blame the less fortunate for all of their problems while not realizing that they are not much better off. You know, when you're blaming people and looking at people and pointing your finger at them, you, maybe you're not that much better off. Those that mock us who believe in God, they ridicule a person who is devout. They make jokes about the, the pie in the sky loving Christians uh, that all we're waiting for. But that's all right, though. It's all right because we know we have the answer to a much higher authority. Am I right about it? And you know what? They want to judge us. Let them go ahead. We are judged by the scriptures. And Matthew 7, 1 through 3 says, Judge not that you be not judged. For the way you're going to judge others is the way you will be judged. That's what's important. Are you smarter than a thief? Hmm. Next statement. The thief said, And we are in this condition justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. He knew that he was a thief. I'm a thief. He knew that he was a thief. He probably was a murderer, too. He knew what he had done, and he knew that it was evil. There's no telling how long, how long he and his partner had been stealing and killing all around Jerusalem. He was honest about his situation, and he made no excuses. You know what, church? Too many people today try to deny what they have done or try to rationalize their acts or make excuses about what they did. I did what I had to do. Did you? Really? Did you? Did you have to break the law? Really? Did you have to go, go inside that store? Did you have to cheat someone? People today lie, you see. People today misrepresent themselves uh, on, on, on application, on documents that, that are official. People today lie and cheat on their taxes. Hello? People hide money from their spouses. Or I say hello because this is April, right? Can we, can we get the 15th coming up. 
In, in a few weeks, you got turning your taxes or turning in some kind of statement, right? People lie. People embezzle from the employers. People file false income tax returns or doctor up their profit and loss statement all the time. And that, that's from the lowest level employees to the highest level of government, we find people doing that. Too many people today are lying. Too many people today don't accept responsibility for what they are doing and what they have done. There's an old expression in baseball that goes like this. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. But that's not, that's not right. <laughs> that's not right in baseball or any other sport, you know. If you're not cheating, you're not trying. I think they said that, but the after they found out, uh, somebody put a little moisture on, on, on the fingertips before they gripped the ball and started pitching it. That's the problem in society. People make excuses for doing wrong. The humble thief acknowledged what he had done and was willing to accept the punishment, church. Can we do that, church? Can we be honest and move forward? Be honest about what we have done and then move forward? You know, Paul, the Apostle Paul, admitted what he had done over in Acts 26, chapter, yeah. starting with verse 1. The people of Nineveh, they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And they knew what they had done. And the Bible says, behold, a greater than Jonah is here. And that's Jesus Christ himself. Are you smarter than a thief? But this man has done nothing amiss, he said. Talking about Jesus, he's done nothing to miss. He had enough common sense to recognize an honest man. He was honest enough to admit his realization in public. In public. He was not jealous or scornful like his partner hanging on the other side of the cross. People today, church, are hesitant to say anything when they see something wrong that happens. Or they see an injustice being committed. Are you like that? Are you hesitant to say something when it's wrong? No one wants to speak up. No one wants to say that something is wrong. We are afraid to get involved today. And that's a shame. That's a tragedy. Because we're Christians. We're supposed to be the moral compass of the world. We should want to get involved. We see people down and out, and we don't want to help them. We see a car on the side, on the side of the road and a driver trying to flag down for help. We don't want to stop. We don't want to help them. We see a man beating his wife or, 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 or abusing children, and we don't want to intervene or call the authorities. That's not right. Sometimes you got, you got to step out there and step out of faith. Yeah. Now, let me caution you, church. Let me caution you. We are not advocating that anyone put themselves in danger. Yeah. You got to kind of weigh things and balance things and weigh the situation. Because if you're a sister, it's late at night, you're driving, and there's a, you know, there's a man on the highway trying to fly people down. You know, pass him up, you know, <laughs> call somebody and tell them, you know, that there, there's a person there that it was stranded. Call 911 right. and send someone there, but don't you stop there. Uh, <laughs> You know, got to kind of balance things, things out a little bit, you know. But do what you can, though. Don't ignore, ignore the opportunity to help people. Look at the Good Samaritan, Luke 10, 25 to 37. He did all that he could for that man. We, uh, we can all see that as a call to action to do something to help our fellow man. James 1, 27, pure religion and undefiled before God the Father is to do this. Visit the widows and the orphans in their affliction. You got to help those people who need help who are downtrodden, who are suffering today. So I say to you again, are you smarter than a thief? Mm -hmm. And then the thief said, Lord. He said, Lord. Think about that. that. That means a lot right there. He called Jesus Christ Lord. A thief. A man hanging on a cross who would rob who knows how many people. He said, Lord. Yeah. He humbled himself in the presence of Jesus. He recognized that Jesus Christ was not just a man or a prophet. He called him Lord. No doubt he had heard something about this man, Jesus. No doubt he had heard Jesus teach. No doubt he, heard, he had heard that Jesus may have done some miracles. Now, he may not have bothered to investigate it, and he certainly was not a disciple, but he had heard something about this man, Jesus. And at this time, in his final hour of his life, he had the presence of mind to call Jesus Lord, Lord. Nicodemus said that over in John, the third chapter, uh, verse 2, he said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do the things that thou doest, the miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Yeah. You got to recognize the lordship and the master uh, teacher that Jesus Christ was. In our lives, we must, we must recognize the lordship of Jesus. He is our Savior, am I right? Amen. He brings joy and peace to us and to all of us. But that does not put him on our level. He's way above our, our level. We need to have a healthy dose 
of respect for Jesus because of what he did for us and where he is right now in heaven on the right hand of God. Are you smarter than a thief? Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom, he said. He made a request of Jesus, a request that only Jesus could bestow. No one else could bestow that to him at that moment in time while he's hanging there at the end of his life. He obviously had heard Jesus' message somewhere and somehow. Otherwise, he couldn't even make that statement, remember me when you come into your kingdom. How did he hear about the kingdom? He heard something about, the, about Jesus Christ and his message, and he understood that Jesus was going to a place. <laughs> he was going to a place where he was still going to be alive when he got there. He may have heard uh, the false witnesses testifying against Jesus, uh, uh, and he may have heard Jesus speaking to Pilate. We don't know. Uh, John 18, 35 to 37, where Jesus was speaking back and forth to Pilate. But this thief, this humble thief, understood some things about Jesus, and therefore he made a request of Jesus which demonstrated that he believed. He believed, and therefore he made the, that request. You know, church, sometimes there's some life-defining moments in our life that cause us to shake up, and they stick to us, and they make us realize we got to do some changes. we we, we got to change direction. Don't let it be like this thief on the cross. Don't be, let it be at the very end. But realize those moments and let, them, let those moments stay with you. When Peter told Jesus, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, that was a moment yeah. right there. That was a moment over in Matthew 16, verse 18. When the eunuch told Philip, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, that was a moment that Luke wrote about. And when, when Luke wrote about the, the Christian at, at Antioch, they gathered together and worshiped with Paul and the apostles for a whole year. And the, and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. That was a moment. Yeah. And there were moments that you have had, if you think about it, where you had to freeze in time and just think about what happened to you, how God blessed you, how God delivered you. And when you do, it should make you want to do more. It should make you want to do more in terms of living right and make you do more in terms of applying yourself to this Christian life and make you want to do more to obey the commandments of Jesus every day of your life, every day. This statement by this thief was one of those moments. He demonstrated a moment of clarity. Here was a man who stole and possibly killed and, and committed such a heinous, a heinous crime that the Roman government gave him the death penalty. You know he had to do something, something bad. He had to do something bad to get up there on that, on that cross. His life was over. And there was nothing more for him to do in life. Yet he reached out. He reached out to the one who had the power of salvation in his hand. The one who, had, who could make that thing happen. And said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And before this conversation, Jesus Christ asked God to forgive them, all of them, who were putting him to death. Because they did not know what they were doing. They didn't realize that they were putting him to death. But they also didn't realize they were fulfilling the prophecy and fulfilling the, 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 the pathway that Jesus must follow. What would this thief have done if he could have came down off that cross? Imagine that. If he could have got down off that cross. <laughs> Well, if the Lord had let him come down from that, I am convinced, sir, I have no scripture for this, but I'm convinced that he would not have squandered that opportunity. He would not, if he got another chance, another chance in life to get out there and do it right this time, then, then I'm, I'm, I'm convinced he would have done that. That's what the Lord is giving us right now. We have a chance right now to get some things done for the Lord to change our, our the trajectory, to correct the wrongs that we have made in this life before it's everlasting too late. And you know what? God's given us so much. Not only has he given us time and opportunity, but grace and mercy and his blessings. And Luke 12, 48 says, Unto whom much is given, much is required. That's you and me. Much is required of all of us. So I ask you again, are you smarter than a thief? Are you smarter than a thief? Point number three, what about us? What about us? We talked enough about this thief, okay? <laughs> We're through with the thief now. Let's move on down to us. What about us, church? Do we acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord? Do we? Do we give Jesus that position in our lives? Do we recognize the deity of Jesus Christ? Peter declared that God has made that same Jesus who you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. 
over in Acts 2, verse 36. John 1, 1 through 15, the apostle John pointed out that in the beginning was the word, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. That's John 1, verse 14. And Jesus Christ told his disciples to have faith and to trust in him. He said, you believe in God, believe also in me. Why? In my Father's house there are many mansions. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Where I am, that ye may be also. Whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, and, and how can we know the way? But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So when we have difficult choices to make in this life, do we think about that? Do we think about the deity of Christ and what he has accomplished and what he offers to us? The fact that Jesus was God's son and had the power to heal and save us. Do we think about that? Do we take time to reflect on that? If not, we should, church. We should. When we have stressful situations, do we think about the deity of Christ? Do we remember that Jesus said that he has come here to help us overcome the struggles of the world? He said, in this world you have trial and tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I believe that's John 16, verse 33. When we are required to go through enormous challenges, do we think about the deity of Christ? Jesus was the Son of God. He can be relied upon through the power of prayer and the vehicle of faith. We come into contact with Jesus today. That's how we get in contact with him, and Jesus will help you. He'll help you get through those difficult times and those difficult moments. I know that's right. When we have questions about our lives and about the direction for our lives, do we think about the answers, the answer to which Jesus Christ has already provided us with? You've got to trust him. And he will provide the answers for you. You're searching. You're seeking for an answer. You're seeking for a way out. You want to be helped out of the situation. Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. He'll be free from your sins. He'll free you from your depression. He'll free you from your discouragement. He'll free you from the hindrances in your life. He'll free you from the bad people. He'll free you from, from the, all the downtrodden people around you. He'll free you so that you can start living a life that is more beneficial. He came to give us life and to give it more abundantly. So each of us has had those moments, those defining moments that have defined our spiritual lives and our spiritual commitments. If you just think about it, church, just think about it and give some real reflection about it. You will remember a time when you experienced something which you thought wouldn't, ha wouldn't happen for you. When you had a time when God, God brought you out of a difficult situation, when you prayed and trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ, and he helped you get through that, that difficult time, that difficult period, that difficult illness, that difficult situation, get past that difficult person or that difficult uh, job they may have had to do. You might have had to struggle for a long time, but when you overcame that situation, boy, that felt good, didn't it? Didn't that feel good when he got you through that? I know that's right. You may have seen the power of God demonstrated in your own life, or you may have seen the power of God demonstrated in the lives of others around you, but that should be a defining moment for you also. That should be convincing you also. You see, church, you have to set your life's course on God's way and God's will. Paul put it this way, for the grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared to all men, yeah. teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously in this present world. Yeah. Titus 2, verse 11 through 12. Yeah. And most importantly, we don't know, church, how much time we have in this life. We don't know. It might be a week. It may be six months, maybe five years. We don't know that. And therefore, we need to work on our spiritual well-being right now while the blood is running warm in our veins. Uh, that song said that we sing all the time. We cannot delay our service to God. People have made this statement. Well, I want to live my life right now. You know, I'm young or I'm middle-aged right now. I want to enjoy myself a little bit. But, you know, when I get old, yeah, when I get old, that's when I'll give my life, you know, to, to, to Jesus and I'll give my time to, to, uh, to the Lord's work and, and, and church work and that kind of thing. Church, I cannot begin to tell you how many different levels that, that, that's wrong on. You are wrong on so many different levels. When you make statements like that, when you think like that, 
You're so wrong about it. You don't know if you will be old, if you'll get to be old, if you have the time left. And don't think you're going to be like, like that thief on the cross. It doesn't happen that way. Jesus Christ was the one who made the exception, and he's not here to make an exception for you, nor will he if he was here. Because you have the time on, on, your, on, your, on your side. You have time right now. You don't know what tragedies and trials you have to face. The time to act is now. Are you smarter than a thief? You should be. In conclusion, church, think about that thief. This lesson was not a lesson about the consequences of being a thief. No. It's not a lesson about how unfair the Romans and the Jews and the crowd was to Jesus. This lesson is not about taking a shortcut to heaven. And it's not a lesson about the, the various types of error which are being taught by some of our denominational friends and associates. But rather, church, it is a lesson that takes introspect and look at our lives, our dedication to Jesus, and the faith that it takes to please God. That's what this lesson is about. I hope you can see that. It's also a lesson about using one's time wisely in this life. See, the humble thief, he waited until the end of his life to realize that Jesus was who he claimed to be, the Son of God and the Savior of the world. At the end of his life, he realized that. Jesus made an exception for him and welcomed him into the heavenly kingdom. But the problem with the thief's realization is that when he did realize who Jesus was, when he did finally acknowledge it, he had nothing left to give. Nothing. No life, no service, no nothing. He's going to be dead in five minutes. He had forfeited his life by pursuing a life of theft and murder. He was never going to be a disciple. He was not going to be able to follow Jesus. He was not going to be able to witness the miracles of Jesus. He was not going to be able to testify to others. And he was not going to be able to become a member of the Lord's church, which Jesus established when he died. So if you're smarter than a thief, then you have to remember that all these things you can do right now. Okay? But you cannot embark on a life of sin and stay there. If you are in sin, you got to get out of it. You will not steal from others and you not kill another innocent person uh, in, your, in your spiritual life or in your physical life. But more importantly, you will not wait. If you're smarter than a thief, you won't wait until the end of your life to acknowledge Jesus and ask him to take you to heaven. It doesn't work that way. It's not going to work that way. You cannot expect the Lord to let you live 30, 40, 50, and 60 years on the, on the earth while a member of his church and do nothing but still be rewarded with the heavenly kingdom. It doesn't work that way. You've got to do something, church. Do something today for the Lord. Jesus Christ made an exception for the humble thief, but only he can make that exception. Keep that in mind. The rest of us have to be faithful in our lives. We must be productive in our Christian lives. We have to figure out what we can do for the cause of Christ. You can do things that me and Brother Ellis can't do because you're around some people that we will never see, that we'll never impact and never have an opportunity to talk or influence. You can do something right now for the cause of Christ. So we have to develop a strategy, church. Each one of us must develop his or her strategy to have an impact on others around us. We have to do our part in teaching the gospel to others. That's the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. We must teach correctly on this passage, though. Don't let anyone walk around you saying, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll give my life to Christ uh, be, be, before I die. I'll call the priest. I'll call the pastor. Let, let him render you know, the, the rituals over me, and I'll be okay. That's not going to happen, okay? This passage does not teach that, and we cannot waste away our productive years and then when there's nothing left, and when we're tired and broken down and bent and beat up and in the hospital, then say, oh, yeah, I'll give my life to, to Christ right now. Think about the absurdity. Think about the absurdity of that. We can learn a lot from a, a man who was neither a disciple or an apostle. We can learn a lot from a man who admittedly stole and admittedly murdered. We can learn a lot from this man. Perhaps he heard about Jesus, or perhaps he knew about his miracles, but it wasn't until he was on the cross, yeah. on the cross, that he humbled himself and had a moment of clarity. What will it take for you to be humble? What will it take for you to have that moment of clarity? What will it take for you to realize what your life's work will be for the cause of Christ? 
where we really determine to live our lives for God. We must all ask ourselves that question, what about us? What about us? Are we smarter than a thief? We should be. Have we seen enough in our own lives? I know I have. Have we witnessed God's mercy in our own lives? Have we witnessed God's intervention in our own lives? Have we seen God's grace and mercy in our own lives? And then do we have what it takes, church, to push on in the spiritual excellence? Do we have what it takes today? Can we be an effective and productive Christian today? If we can, if we can, we will be blessed. And if we can, the church will benefit. And if we can, those that we come into contact with will learn something about the true will of God. And if we can, then the church, then the church will grow. And to grow and grow and our influence will be spread throughout the community. And no one and no thing and no power on earth can stop us. Oh, what a day that would be. This is my prayer and my wish for all of us. In the name of Jesus, amen. And the lesson is yours. There may be some who are in our assembly or even uh, experiencing us on Facebook or YouTube who are not members of the body of Christ. You're not a member of the church that Jesus died for. And that church can be found in, in Acts, the second chapter, the day of Pentecost, it was established. If you're not a member of that church, then you're in, in a, a lost condition right now. And where Jesus is, on the right hand of God, where he is, you cannot go. It doesn't matter how good a person you are. It doesn't matter all the great things you think you have done. Working in soup kitchens and, and helping the poor, giving clothes and donations. Those are good things. But if you have not been a member of the Lord's church, you can't go where he is. What then must we do, Brother David? I'm glad you asked me that. The things that we were talking about in this lesson today, that's what you must do to obtain salvation. You must hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ left the portals of heaven, came down to the earth, and lived here on the earth, an exemplary life, taught us, and healed people all over his region, and left the information with his disciples as to how the church should be organized. And then, though he did no wrong, he allowed himself to be crucified on the cruel Roman cross for the sins of the world. Jesus Christ died on that cross, and he was buried in a borrowed tomb. But three days later, the Bible tells me that the, that the stone was rolled away from that tomb. And I'm told that that stone was about two tons. That's a lot of weight. It would be a whole lot of disciples would be required to, to move that stone. Yeah. But only one angel was required to move it. An angel came and moved the stone away, and Jesus came up out of the grave. Why? Because no stone could keep him. No power could hold him. The ground couldn't keep him because God said, I will raise him up from the dead. Right. And because Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and is alive right now, that gives us hope that one day we can be raised from the dead also, and one day we can have life eternal in the heavenly kingdom. And that, church, is good news, and that's the gospel. You have to hear that gospel. You have to believe that gospel with all of your heart. You must be willing to repent of your sins, to change from worldliness to godliness. Make that change. It may not happen overnight, but you got to start. you got to begin moving in that direction. You must be willing to admit or confess your belief in Jesus Christ and in him to be the son of God. That's a good confession, Acts 8, verse 37. And then be willing to be buried in water baptism for the remission of your sins. You're going to be immersed in the water all the way, and we bring you back up again. And then and only then can you claim to be a Christian according to the New Testament. And then it's your duty and your task and your responsibility to live your life as best you can as a Christian, doing your part to carry the word and go and tell somebody the good news about what God has done for you. So we implore you today, if you want to be baptized, let us know the water is ready and the baptizer is ready. The question is, are you ready? If you are a member of the church already, but you have gone away, you've strayed, and you come back, and you just happen to be here today, just happen to hear the message today, we invite you to repent of your sins and be rededicated back to the Lord's church today. Just let us know what it is, the, 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 the desire you have 
You don't have to report to us the facts or the details of your sin. God knows that, and you know it. We don't need to know it. We need to know that you are willing to repent and be rededicated, and we're going to pray with you and for you. And if you are a person who has been struggling, or you need some help, you, you're depressed, you need some answers, you need some encouragement, we'll pray with you and for you also. So as I've already been mentioned uh, in, in past weeks here, you're sitting in pews in the building here, fill, fill out the response card while we're singing the invitation song. As the ushers are coming down the aisle, give the, the response card to them. They will bring it to the front and we'll address your needs, whatever it may be. So if you are subject to the invitation anyway, we ask you to respond while together we stand and sing the invitation song. Somebody's knocking at your door, and oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door, knocks like Jesus. Somebody's knocking at your door. Not like Jesus, somebody's knocking at your door. And oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Can't you hear somebody? Somebody's knocking at your door. Can't you hear him? Somebody's knocking at your door. And oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Answer Jesus, somebody's knocking at your door. Answer Jesus, somebody's knocking at your door. And oh, sinner, why don't you Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. And oh, sinner, why don't you answer? Somebody's knocking at your door. Amen. 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 I want to thank Brother Lewis for that wonderful message this morning. Uh, simply put, are you smarter than a thief? Uh, definitely appreciate that message. It was a little different. It was a little different, but we definitely appreciate it. So we thank you for that. Uh, at this time now, uh, we are going to all hear the requests that have been made uh, this morning, uh, prayer requests, and then we're going to pray one for another as we are instructed to do so according to the scriptures. Uh, our first request comes in from our sister Jean. Uh, sister Jean writes that she's requesting prayer for eye surgery on Friday. She's also requesting prayer uh, that everything will go well with the entire procedure. So be mindful of that, Sister Jean. Offer that up in prayer this morning. We also received a request from our sister Cassandra Wade. Uh, sister Wade writes, please pray for my family to get their priorities right before it's too late. She's also asking prayer for her son, who's going through so much, uh, helping his father at this time, and I. And then also she writes, please pray for my brother. I can't do it. I've decided to let go and let God. I'll just try to be a good example. So we thank you for that, uh, Sister Wade. Thank you for that. We'll be sure to keep that prayer request in mind this morning. We also received a prayer request from our sister Mamie Irby. Uh, sister Irby writes, um, She's requesting prayers for traveling, gra uh, traveling grace for the entire family 
beginning April 1st of 2023. So be mindful of that. Uh, Sister Irby and family will be traveling uh, this upcoming week. We also received a request from Sister Kim Pollard this morning. Sister Kim writes, uh, good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm asking that the church pray for my cousin, um, my cousin, Alphonse Wilson. He was in a terrible motorcycle accident and currently is on a ventilator. He needs a lot of prayer. Also, please pray for my immediate family. Thank you, Sister Kim. So we'll definitely keep all those family members in prayer, Sister Pollard. Then we also received a card this morning from our brother, Jeffrey Brown. Uh, brother Brown writes, uh, please pray for uh, a family friend named Eddie Thomas and also for Brother Calvin Adams at this time as well. So thank you for that, Brother Brown. We'll be sure to add those to the prayer list. We also received a prayer request this morning from Grace Navarro. Uh, Grace Navarro writes, uh, please pray for my children, and she lists them by name, uh, Karen Vega, Kenny um, Morales, Katie uh, Morales, Kevin Navarro. Uh, she's praying or requesting prayer that they will see the light of Jesus Christ. So we'll definitely be mindful of that. And in terms of our online platforms this morning, uh, we did receive a couple of prayer requests as well. Uh, from, first, from our sister Nancy Acosta. Uh, sister Acosta is requesting prayer for her family and also her, her parents who are not in good health at this time. Uh, sister Acosta is asking prayer um, that she will be a better example. Uh, to those she comes in contact with. So be sure to add her to the prayer list. And we also received on the online platform a uh, prayer request from Sister uh, Bridget Fletcher. Uh, she's asking prayers for her family, uh, also uh, praying um, for healing for the congregation at this time as well, too. All right, thank you for that, Brother Harris. We also want to keep in mind those that we do know that uh, are not in their seats this morning here in the building. I uh, want to keep in mind that the Stevensons are traveling. Also, Brother and Sister Irwin are still traveling, as well as Brother Ernie and Brother Shiloh uh, are traveling as well. So we want to keep all those uh, in our prayer this morning. Uh, let us all bow. Let us pray together. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, dear God. We just thank you, dear Heavenly Father, just for blessing all of us to be able to worship you this morning, dear Heavenly Father. We're just praying, dear God, that up until this point, our worship has been pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We're thankful for the manservant, dear Heavenly Father, this morning. We just ask that you'll continue to strengthen him. Just continue to crown his head with wisdom, dear God, that he can come and share those messages that you place on his heart, dear Heavenly Father, in a way that will cause us to think and, and apply uh, those lessons, dear Heavenly Father, to our own Christian walks each and every day. We're just praying that we all can be strengthened through your word, dear Heavenly Father. Pray that we can be strengthened through this service this morning. We're mindful of the request that came in this morning, dear Heavenly Father, and we're just praying, dear God, that you would just please be with all those who have made a uh, special request this morning, dear Heavenly Father. We're asking a special prayer that you would be with our uh, sister Cassandra Wade at this time, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, we're just praying for her and her entire family as they are dealing with a lot. We're just asking, dear God, that you'll strengthen sister Cassandra where she needs strength, dear Heavenly Father. Praying that you'll be with her husband and her son and uh, just all those who are uh, in need of prayer at this time, dear Heavenly Father. We just ask that you'll just bless that entire family at this time, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, we're also mindful of our sister Kim Pollard who requested prayer this morning, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, we're just praying, dear God, that you would be with her family member who was involved in a car, uh, motorcycle accident. Uh, we're just praying, dear God, that uh, you'll just uh, intervene in that situation if it's your will. Asking, dear God, that you'll just strengthen Sister Kim at this time as well. Uh, we're mindful of our brother Jeffrey Brown, dear Heavenly Father, who requested prayer uh, for a family friend, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, you know exactly what they stand in need of, dear God. We're just asking that you'll be there to provide that for them, dear God. Uh, we're praying that you'll please uh, strengthen Brother Jeffrey, that if he can uh, minister to them in any way that you'll just allow him to do so, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, we also, dear Heavenly Father, are mindful of the ones who will be traveling uh, this upcoming week. Please be with Sister uh, Mamie Irby and her entire family, dear Heavenly Father, as they will be traveling. Also be with the Stevensons who are traveling at this time, the Irwin family uh, who is traveling at this time, and uh, Brother Ernie and Brother Shiloh as well, dear Heavenly Father, as they travel uh, to and from their destination as well, dear Heavenly Father. We're also mindful of our Brother Calvin Adams, dear Heavenly Father. We just ask that uh, you'll just continue to bless Brother Calvin, continue to help his body heal and recover, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, we're thankful for the progress he has made thus far. But we're just asking, dear God, that you'll just continue to be with Brother Calvin uh, at this time, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, we're also mindful of the one that made a request uh, this morning. Uh, Grace, I believe, was the name, dear Heavenly Father. 
Uh, we just ask to God that you would be with her, the entire Morales and Navarro family, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, whatever they stand in need of, dear Heavenly Father, we're just praying that you'll just be there to, to give it to them, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, we just ask to God that uh, if there's anything we could do here at the congregation, uh, that you'll just strengthen us uh, to do so, dear Heavenly Father, uh, that we can minister to that entire family uh, at this time, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, we're also uh, mindful of our sister Jean, dear Heavenly Father, uh, who will be going through a medical procedure on her eyes, I believe, this week, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, we're just praying, dear God, that all will go well. Praying, dear God, that you will be with all the doctors and nurses that will be attending to Sister Jean at this time, uh, that uh, the entire procedure will be a success uh, when it's all said and done, dear Heavenly Father. We're also mindful of the requests that came in uh, on the online platforms, dear God. Uh, please be with the Acosta family at this time, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, Sister Acosta just praying that she could just be a better example, dear Heavenly Father. We're just asking that you'll just strengthen her to do so. Uh, be with her uh, parents at this time whose health is not the best, dear Heavenly Father. We just pray that if it's your will, that you'll just touch them in a special way and heal their bodies uh, and just allow them a normal portion of health and strength. Also mindful of the request that came in from our sister LaBridget this morning, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, we're just praying, dear God, that you'll just answer her prayers in your time, dear Heavenly Father. We just ask that you'll just uh, uh, bless Sister LaBridget, uh, heal her, dear Heavenly Father, heal uh, her body, dear Heavenly Father, and just uh, grant her the strength that she is in need of at this time, dear Heavenly Father. We just ask, dear God, that uh, you'll be with all of those who uh, made requests this morning, dear Heavenly Father, uh, just in case I might have forgotten one, dear Heavenly Father. Uh, we're praying to a God that knows all and, and hears all and ultimately can do all, dear Heavenly Father. So we're just asking that you'll answer each and every one of these requests that were made this morning in your time as only you can, dear Heavenly Father. We just ask that you'll just bless all those who made requests uh, this morning, those who filled out the card, and uh, those who made requests in their hearts, dear Heavenly Father, for one reason or another did not fill out a card. Uh, whatever they stand in need of this morning, dear Heavenly Father, we're just praying that you'll be there for them as well, too. We ask, dear God, that you will go with us through the furtherance of this worship service as we uh, complete all acts of worship, dear God. We're just praying that we do them all in spirit and in truth and do them all pleasing and acceptable. We love you. We thank you for Jesus. We pray all this in his name. Amen. As we pause and prepare our hearts and minds for the communion, if you have not received a communion cup, please raise your hand and the ushers will bring one to you. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The suffering and shame and I love that old cross where the dearest and blessed for a world of lost sinners was slain so I'll cherish the old trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a part of the service where we're to uh, reflect on the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And certainly the minister has thoroughly, thoroughly talked through that situation. We understand what it means. And now it's just a matter of whether we're brave enough to accept those things and committed enough to do those things that would help to save us. Yes. So at this time, I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians 11th chapter, beginning at verse 23. For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. At this time, we'll pray for the bread. Father God, we thank you for the sacrifice that you allowed your son to die, Father. We ask you, Father, that we not take this in vain mm -hmm. and that we do our very best, dear God, to follow your precepts. Ask you to bless these emblems, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 
Let us take of the bread at this time. So despised by the world has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God has his glory above till the end in dark. Cherish the rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to. Someday for a crown. Amen. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Let us pray once again for the cup. Father, once again we thank you, Father, for the sacrifice that you allowed your son Jesus to die for us, Father. Help us, God, to take these emblems uh, in the spirit which has been given, Father, that we might live better and, and, and be better Christians, Father. We thank you for your son, Jesus, and in his name do we pray. Amen. 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 Let us take up the cup. Has anyone been overlooked for the communion? Equally as important, the Lord has blessed us with an income, and he expects us to give our portion to the church so the church can do those things that need to be done and taken care of. And he especially is concerned with the spirit by which you give these emblems, so or give this, give this offering. So let us examine ourselves that we may give the way we should and with the right intent. Reading from 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 and 2. Now concerning the collection of the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Amen. At this time, we'll pray for the offering. Our Father God in heaven, we thank you once again for allowing us to have an income, Father. We ask you to bless us and be with us, Father, that we may have the right spirit in which we give these emblems, Father. We ask you to bless us and help those that are unable to give at this time that you give them an opportunity in the future, Father. And for those of us that have income, Father, help us to learn how to give more, Father, such that um, our giving is commensurate with our income. Mm -hmm. We thank you, Father, for Jesus. And in his name do we pray. Amen. Amen. And he rang from heaven above with wind. Dumb power and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He raised from heaven above with wit. Dumb power and love, our God is an awesome God. Let's all say amen. amen. We have truly had a wonderful worship today. And we're happy to have everyone uh, who's in the building here who participated. Yes. And we appreciated uh, your engagement throughout this service. And I, I hope that my message was one that uh, was able to be helpful uh, to us in one way or another. Yes. We want to thank all those who might be visitors with us for the first time. And then if you're repeat visitors, we uh, also welcome the, the repeat visitors here. I did get one visitor's card. <coughs> and I want to acknowledge this visitor and ask her to stand if she doesn't mind. And this is uh, Sh Sheila Parham, who lives in West Covina. Where is Sheila Parham seated? Okay, right there in the back, there in the same row as, as Sister Cassandra. And, uh, and Sheila Parham, uh, 
since her brother was baptized and a member of this congregation, his name uh, is Anson Parham. Mm -hmm. Yes, we certainly remember Brother Parham. Brother Parham passed away a few years ago. I, be I believe I preached the eulogy for Brother Parham and when he did pass away. Uh, we certainly appreciated him, and I know that speaking uh, personally for me and Brother Ellis Jr., you know, the Parhams went through high school with us mm -hmm. at Bassett High School yeah. back in the day. Mm -hmm. so we, we know the Parhams, and I haven't seen uh, some of them since the, the last picnic we had. <laughs> but uh, we certainly appreciated uh, that family. So uh, thank you, uh, Sheila, for being with us today. And I hope you come and visit with us again. Yeah. And, and be sure and get to know her afterwards. Uh, I do want to add uh, one, uh, one more uh, prayer request. Uh, the Lewis family and the Foreman family suffered another loss just recently. Uh, our cousin Erickson Foreman passed away uh, this past week. Uh, he was uh, about maybe two or three years younger than my brother Ernie. Uh, he had some heart issues and uh, passed away uh, as a result this week. So please keep the Foreman family and the, the Lewis family in prayer regarding that. We just really want to thank all of those who have done so much. A, a wonderful job that people did uh, throughout the week <coughs> and all the efforts uh, last week and this week. You know, the food service team, great job. Those right. teaching classes, great job also. And those who work behind the scenes, the greeters, you're doing a great job, uh, sisters. Appreciate all those efforts. Uh, just want to say that uh, we did have a very nice fellowship last evening mm -hmm. uh, on behalf of Brother Cecil Turner, yeah. you know, and uh, quite a few of you uh, were there. And I see you here, so I'm glad that <coughs> that you didn't let the ill effects uh, <laughs> <laughs> affect you. Yeah. yeah. Someone came to me and said, "Brother David, you didn't see anything here." Did, did you? I said, "You know what? Uh, I'll, I'll hold to myself. I use it as leverage uh, for for a future date, if, if need be. Yeah. Oh, oh, what what I may or may not have seen <laughs> last night. But we certainly do uh, wish Brother Cecil, so, uh, of course, happy birthday, and congratulations on he and his wife, Sister Teresa." Uh, with, with the flying fellowship. We need to do more of that, more fellowship yeah. opportunities. Yeah. And those who of you who are watching on Facebook and YouTube, you don't know what you're missing. Yeah. You, as soon as you can, come back to the building in person if you're able to so you can enjoy the fellowship in person with, with, with us as we assemble together. Yeah. That being said, we'll turn it over to the announcer at this time. Thank yeah. you. a few announcements. A lot of people on the sick list. Uh, get through it real fast. Uh, continue to pray for Brother Zaman, who is ill but getting better. Uh, Betty Fletcher is thanking all the everyone for all the support she's uh, received during this bereavement. Asking prayers for Brother Joe Fletcher Jr. is suffering a, an allergic reaction, and we know the Stevensons are traveling. Uh, also, we prayed for Brother Adam's health. Ernie Lewis uh, prayers as he and Shiloh are traveling. And for Alan and Proctor families as they are bereaved. Cleta Butler is asking prayer for her sister Brenda, who is back in the hospital, and herself as she is facing health challenges. Uh, Brother Irwin asking prayers for Gilliam and Barnett families as they have lost a member of the family. Sheila Johnson's asking prayers for strength and faithfulness, and we heard from Sister Wade. Uh, Adele Jr. is traveling back to school from home, and prayers for her family. Jeffrey Brown, we heard his request. Okay, also, uh, this good brother right here has uh, offered his services to drive whoever wants to go to the Watts Willowbrook Church next month. They're having a singing uh, fellowship, and he's going to drive the uh, van if anyone's interested in attending. See Brother Hooper. Uh, evening services tonight. Hello. Evening service tonight. So we're expecting as many that is able to come back to come back. Okay. Um, they're also having a youth Sunday, April 30th, 5 p.m. Okay. 
Calling all ladies. Ladies T is uh, coming up April 22nd. So there was a list going around. I think uh, Sister Yarbrough may have a list and need to sign up if you're going to attend the tea. Potluck, t potluck sign up and those wanting to join the table decorating contest, see uh, Sister Valerie Yarbrough. Please reserve with Lydia or Michelle by April 16th. Michelle, I'm sorry, Michelle. And I know her too. <laughs> You better always bring your glasses, I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, our evening service speak, uh, evening service tonight, the speaker is going to be Brother uh, Kirk D. Harris. Yeah. So come back, hear another message from God's yeah. Word. Yeah. And happy birthday today to Calvin Adams yeah. and also Lyd Lydia Flores. I won't say the age, but it's written down here. All right, uh, brothers, have I missed any other? Sure. I want to make sure that we're uh, clear. Uh, we do uh, offer uh, several options of giving. And uh, so Brother Hoover came in a little bit faster on the, on the song there, and Brother Reggie wasn't able to fully explain it. But we do offer the option that you can use PayPal, and you can go to the, uh, the Don Pointy uh, site for PayPal. Or if you want, you can, uh, of course, uh, pay uh, your offering with a check or cash, give it to one of the ushers who has a basket. Not to any brother, <laughs> but to an usher that has a basket at, at one of the exit doors, and we'll be happy to take your, your contribution. Thank you. And then there's also, of course, uh, bread. The bread was it given out Thursday, so that there's plenty of bread in the back. Please get the bread. We can't get it. If it goes bad, we have to get rid of it. So we need, when, we get, when we dismiss, go to the uh, fellowship hall. There's bread. Uh, Panera Bread, I believe it's Panera Bread. Yeah. And it's good. Popola, what you call it? Portos. Portos. Not just bread, portos. <laughs> also tonight we're going to have the birthday and anniversary ce uh, celebrations. Let us stand. We'll sing a verse of a song. And our brother uh, Jeffrey will lead us in prayer. <clears throat> what a fellowship, what a joy divine. I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessed is, what a peace of mind. I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. You know that leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, safe and secure from all along. Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus, I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. Let us pray. Once again, Heavenly Father, we come before your throne, Lord, humbly as we can, Lord, just praising you, Lord, just giving you honor and glory for all things, Lord. Lord, we ask for continuous forgiveness of all of our sins, Lord, that's before us, Lord. And Lord, you heard all the prayers, Lord, that went up today, Lord. You heard all the wishes, thoughts, all things you've heard, Lord. So we just toss it up to you, Lord, and have you just slam dunk it for us, Lord. And Lord, we just pray that everything that we've done today, Lord, was pleasing and acceptable unto you, Lord. And we ask all these things in Jesus' most marvelous name, amen. Good morning, and on behalf of the La Puente Church of Christ, we want to thank you for being a part of our worship service today. We hope and pray that you were blessed by being a part of our worship service this morning. And we would encourage you, if you have any questions or comments, to please reach out to the congregation here. Uh, you can visit our church website at www.lapuentechurchofchrist.com or you can give us a call here at the building. Monday through Friday during normal business hours. Our telephone number here is 626-917-8814. We hope and pray that when this pandemic is over, that you'll be a part of our worship services here in person at the building. But in the meantime, we want to thank you once again for logging on and enjoying our live stream worship service this morning with us today. If there's any way that we can service our online community, 
please do not hesitate to call with any questions, comments, or even if you wanted to schedule a Bible correspondence. Once again, visit our website or give us a call here at the building. We look forward to talking with you and to worshiping together. Thank you. God bless.